Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of the Best Picture Must Be Doing Something Right podcast. Um, before we get started, I just want to uh, point out uh, and plug the new YouTube channel that we've got. All episodes are going to be uploaded on there as well. Just search Best Picture Must Be Doing Something Right into Google or into YouTube and you will find it. Um, again, so if you could subscribe to that, that'd be great. Uh, as you can also subscribe on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and many other places, anywhere that you can find it, really. Um, Hello. Hello, Jamie. Hello, thank you for coming on today. We are talking about a film that you mentioned at the end of the last episode, just after oh, yeah, recording. Time. I was thinking, I'm not, I'm not starting the recording again, just to make yeah, this one yeah. point, because we can just do a new exactly. episode on it the next week. Um, and that film is Lost in Translation. And we were mentioning Lost in Translation because it is written and directed by Sophia Coppola, the ex-wife of um, Spike Jones, who directed Her. And uh, Her is written from the perspective of dealing with divorce, while apparently this film is also centred around um, Sophia Coppola's relationship with Spike Jones. Um, the film stars Bill Murray, Scott Johansson, Giovanni Ribisi, and Anna Faris. And it came out in 2003 and was nominated for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, and won Best Original Screenplay, making Sofia Coppola the first uh, woman to ever be nominated in all three uh, of the main categories in Picture, Director, and in Screenplay. Since has happened, I believe Catherine Bigelow, she obviously won Best Picture with The Hurt Locker and also with Greta Gerwig and two uh, before Lady Bird and two from this year as well, Emerald Fennel for Promising Young Woman and Chloe Zhao for Nomadland. Um, uh, yeah, the, the film was nominated for Best Picture alongside uh, Lord of the Rings Return of the King, Master and Commander, Far Side World, Mystic River and Sea Biscuit in 2003. Um, shall we get started so- on that talk Talk about the film. What were your general Unfortunately, thoughts on, like on it was film? never going to be Return of the King, which was this big epic no, it was, it, conclusion. I, I believe it's the, the it's the film that's won the most Oscars ever. Yeah, I, I think so. I'm pretty pretty certain. And it was it was because the previous two had been nominated for Best Picture, um, and it was a case of oh we haven't awarded it yet, and that was like the main part. So it could have done better in another yeah, year. Yeah, definitely. I think, um, potentially. I think it helped it was on the original side of screenplay rather than adapted. But we'll talk about more about its awards accolades later. Um, what are your general thoughts on this film? Is it a first it was time, first for time watch, for uh, watch for me? Yeah. yeah. Um, Something I've wanted, wanted I didn't really know what to expect. I mean, it's one of those ones I've seen talked about all the time on the yeah. internet. And the idea that it's a companion piece to her is just very... I think it's very interesting. It gives it a whole new retroactive meaning once you you find you yeah. know you find out more of the behind the scenes stuff with um with with Jones and Coppola. Mm. Yeah, because it's because it's set set place during the relationship yeah. rather than her being very much centered around after the relationship. Apparently, um, just a bit of context with this, uh, the Scarlett Johansson character, um, whose name is Charlotte is uh, based on Coppola, and uh, Giovanni Ribisi's character, John, is based on Spike Jones. But unfortunately, he's anyway. not really much of a character as uh, Giovanni Ribisi. No. He's just kind of uh, is, is a plot device, and they get him out of the way at the end of the first act, would you say? That, that's sort of the point, yeah. isn't it? Is that he's distant. And you definitely to, uh, feel that. I mean, this, this is very much a film about finding a connection. And the title's brilliant. It, it works yeah. on so many levels, and I really enjoy that. Like, yeah. they're li- setting it in another country when they're both American really helps as well. Really sets this feeling of yeah. isolation. Oh, I mean, I thought the feeling. I, I yeah, thought when sorry, the film yeah. first started, I wondered if if she'd been forced to move out to Tokyo for like, and she'd been there for like a year or summer with her with a new husband. Yeah, but she's. Yeah. It makes it more interesting that they're both just there on um, for business trip reasons. So it's not like they're going to be stuck there for long. But it yeah. just makes it even more well, prominent how isolated they feel. This seems like the longest week. Yeah. 
<laughs> doesn't it? It's all like, how many nights are they going to spend here? Like, I'm sure there's more than seven here. But um, it's like, it's like, oh, I'm leaving tomorrow. <laughs> You've gone already. You were going to go Friday. like five weeks ago. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. Um, the, the, what was interesting that I was going to say before was um, the the whole film is centered around. So it starts with where, where it's bookended, isn't it? With Bill Murray in the taxi going to going through Tokyo, and then leaving and then the final scene is him leaving Tokyo in the in the cab. Um not that's no. not a spoiler. We'll get into spoilers. There's some very interesting things I wanna bring up in with with spoilers. Um so unfortunately so basically if you haven't watched this film already, go and watch it and then we can you can come back and listen to that bit because I think it's way more interesting than than um than this bit. Because there's like a there's like a central question that I have that will is it is it a spoiler your whole perspective of the film. It's a romantic comedy without uh yeah i t- I tell you what right this is what i was going to bring up um the whole the whole question i wanted to ask was do you think this i don't think that's a spoiler but i don't think that's a talk- no but it is but it is but it is trust me the the point i want to make is i think spoiler. people even people hearing that now can still go into this and just sort of be kept guessing <laughs> that, that's the thing. That's the thing. Yeah. Where it's, it's not like a plot. It's not. That's interesting because it's not a plot point spoiler. It's more of a. It's. It's. An, it's. An, it's it more is, like though. an intention spoiler. It's a. a, a yeah. It's yeah. How you read it's, the I've seen someone point out this film isn't really about plot. It's about mood. Like mood is more important than yeah. Important yeah. Than plot. It was. It was mocked. I was having a look at uh, a sort of reviews from the time, and it was. It was mocked a lot for being not being about anything, which I find really bizarre. Because yeah, I think it's yeah, about there's a lot, lot of... going on, but it's not. You sort of just carried along with it. It's not explicit, and I think that makes it an absolute genius screenplay and a geniusly sort of constructed film. Is that you don't need the big scenes, you don't need people. Um, you know, screaming at the top of their voice and and car chases and stuff like that to make an exciting and engaging film. Because yeah. this film is absolutely yeah, really, it's not really boring engaging. at all. It, it's not boring at all. You don't. It's not one that you look at the clock or oh, when's this going to be over sort of thing. You like spending time with these characters, which doesn't really make much sense because they're not even that like. No, no, but but not. I don't well, think. I mean, I guess I guess Charlotte's kind yeah. of. Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah she, she's very, she's the most like morally grounded. Like she's just like a, a a really like sweet person who just wants to have a fun time, yeah. like a good time. She's she's basically on vacation, but uh, her husband's on a the business trip. Ca- so yeah. the portrayal of the character is someone that's gone from straight from being a daughter to being yeah. a wife. I get that. I get that. Completely. I, I found out w- when I was researching uh, the film. And that Scott Johansson was only seventeen. That's bizarre, and, uh, and and it uses her youthfulness to a great degree um, in order of of exploring what it's like to be in well, sort of. How old's the character really supposed to be? Like explicitly told, early twenties or something. Yeah, yeah something like early twenties. Said that she, well, you're not. The thing is, you're never really introduced to any of the yeah. characters. You sort of build up knowledge of them as you go along like uh, charlotte and bob the character played by uh, bill murray never introduce each other he, he introduce themselves to each other you just sort of learn more information about them and i feel like that's important in terms of not getting too close like... attached to them which is the whole point of their relationship is to not get have you ever attached. have you ever been on holiday and made like friends while you're there that are just friends for that it's yeah. that sort of thing where you just in this limited time, you grow closer and closer to people that you honestly don't really know. Just during this time where you, you're isolated yeah. in this, this, in what you see as like a, a strange place or, or like a different place, and I yeah. think that works really well. Like I, I felt quite. It's about dealing with dealing with. This I felt nostalgic it? for a, like a place I'd never even been to, just because I related to that feeling of, of of that fast friendship really well. Hmm. It uses its location oh, yeah, very d- well definitely. in terms of setting a tone and mood. And I think if they'd have had literally any scene outside of Tokyo, well, obviously there's like a scene in Kyoto, but if it was like if it was outside of Japan, it wouldn't have felt the same way because you're f- sort of meant to feel like this culture shock, this fish out yeah. of water situation. 
um, and you're supposed to feel as lost as Bill Murray's character because it's sort of like what's interesting is that there's a lot of the film that isn't in English but it's not translated for no, you. No. no subtitles. that's a really good choice I feel like that's really important yeah um, in terms of your, 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 you get that feeling of um, I'm lost in this situation I don't really understand anyone while they have you know that relationship with each other um, in terms of it's interesting to, to me uh, that before they meet each other them kind of scenes are shown as more awkward or confusing but after they meet each other yeah. they're both just kind of taking stride and I'm thinking of the um, the hospital scene yeah hospital scene neither yeah, of them are that same. bothered that they can't understand the, the individual person talking to them because it's just like they have no care in the they're world anymore fun. but before they meet each other it's a bit it's yeah. a bit panicky i mean there's still some of it play it's all in good humor but it's a bit more stressful because especially when they're trying to direct bill murray uh which is it is it, yeah. is it did you yeah, i completely yeah. understood what that director was going for did you <laughs> oh, it was... no because there's but the whole point is that he's going on and on and on and then the translator is just saying like yeah it turns for oh, like to the side so I, was like, I really don't think that's what you. I mean, maybe say. it's just because yeah, we're I'm like... a bit we're a bit more media savvy now. But I, I've seen enough whiskey adverts to understand what the director was going for. <laughs> but it it, it plays yeah. into the confusion that Bill and Marie just they can't communicate directly. And he just doesn't know what to do, and it's a bit annoying and a bit stressful. But yeah, like I say, after the meet each other, everything's just a bit more carefree, and I think that mood comes across really well. Yeah, I, th- I think it's after the scene where they go out. Oh, that, that's karaoke. great. That's really great. It's after that scene. The thing is, I didn't really think that was great because I feel like it disrupted I the thought, tone of the film. But it, but it adapted well from that point to get back on track. It loses its sight. I mean, what would you, what what would you say the tone is? In terms of the tone. I think well, it's I very think somber. It, I, th- I think it's melancholy, melancholy, but not somber. And... If that makes sense, there's some un- there's deliberately right. uplifting and fun moments, but I think yeah. But that's would you say that her story. is very you melancholy? It wasn't like that before. Um, they're very different films. They're I agree, very, very but I, there is parts of both that I would describe as melancholy, which I think is deliberate. I think they exist in the same world. Obviously, her being a yeah, lot more yeah, I know what you <laughs> but I don't think that I don't think they're similar films. Yeah, I think no, the same definitely not. De- I, but... From like her, really, it can really, you know. Uh, yeah, I thought Lost in Translation was much uh, more uplifting, but it's got like, its melancholy moments. Yeah, because there's because there's something to attach yourself to. I think is is the point. There's something literally. So I there, think the karaoke so, scenes yeah. worked. I mean, you know, like you can just skip through them if you want, but. Yeah. No, I don't think that, but I just feel like it was at a point where it just changes the time. It just got it just go on for a bit long. But I think uh, <laughs> the 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 point being that they're now just it's just them having fun. There's no stakes. There's no consequences. Yeah. But it's it's not a problem because it, the mood of the film has shifted, and it's a deliberate shift. No, yeah. No, but this is the thing though, because it's I feel like the whole theme of the film is this kind of restrained emotions where they can't really where they're sort of using each other as their way of yeah. of escaping that and this sort of like jovial attitude towards it i think um it it changes the kind of way that they see each other you... i think sort of thing is what i'm going for I, it's, a, it's a difficult one to sort of um you're onto something there that they're definitely um, using each other as as um as idealistic versions of what they were looking for yeah, and and also like it's a portrait of their future or their past, regard de- dependent on. And another meaning for the title about. is they can't um, really communicate to each other what they actually want, and they don't really try. And I think no. scenes like the karaoke scenes, where they're just having like consequence-free fun, acts as a substitute for actually talking to each yeah. other. And oh, we can't yeah. really spoil uh, uh, what, what happens there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, I just want to talk about Bill Murray's character. Um, I feel like I, I saw someone's um, a bit of trivia saying that uh, Sophia Coppola wouldn't have done the film if Bill Murray yeah, hadn't have agreed to do it. And 
it makes perfect sense because if it's anyone other than Bill Murray in that role, the ca- the, the film doesn't work and, and the character doesn't work. Because no, he's no, he's not, he's not. There's no reason why you should root for Bill Murray's character more than Giovanni Ribisi. No, that's Ribisi's. we're not really. We, we don't get to Realistically. see Giovanni R- R- Ribisi's character. There's... We don't really get his motivations or why why Charlotte like fell in love with him in the first place. We're deliberately yeah. not told that. Well, the only time you see it is where he's completely oblivious to what he should be doing. When he's talking to Anna Faris's character in the oh, in the hotel, was that's the only who was Anna Faris's character based on? Was that deliberate? Uh, there was rumors there was based on. Oh, Cameron Diaz. okay, no, okay. Because obviously Cameron Diaz worked with Spike Jones in um, being John Markovich, but that's been oh, right, rubbish. Right, right. So, but there is there is a what purpose that does that, that character serve um, in the film? I mean, there's a couple of comic relief moments. But other than that, well, I, I, I think it's completely obvious, isn't it? Really, it's about you know desires. Yeah, I think that's implied, really, but not not explicitly. So, yeah, yeah. It's sort of like saying that you can you can still still talk to women in that way. That's what that's what I was going to ask but... when you can't you can't have that same kind of friendship and relationship after you're married. It's just inappropriate. And there is sort of a yeah, yeah. of potential cheating Absolutely. going on in that situation. But that's not explicitly told. It's just like the feeling that you can get. You're in the headspace of Charlotte. The only character. thing that, oh, the thing that confuses me is when she pops back up for a comic relief scene, uh, completely absent of uh, Giovanni Ribs' character yeah. or the the implied triangle going on there. Yeah. It's <laughs> randomly doing karaoke. It's more karaoke. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but what I was going to say about about the character of Bob Harris is that there is... He, this guy's not a nice guy. Like, he misses his son's birthday. He's clearly in a loveless marriage. He does some other stuff that we can't talk about yet. Well, when we're um, introduced... <laughs> and generally... And, and he's, he's being paid $2 million dollars to shoot two whiskey commercials, yeah, and he's just there moaning. Well, it's not even that. He does. So like, come on. He does man. one, oh, I could he be does doing one a play. whiskey commercial and a photo on, shoot. It's the easiest gig in the world. For two million dollars, and you're there for a week. It's sort of like when you're clearly not happy at home anyway. I think it'd be the most buzzing thing. And then that's where it's sort of like tonal shift changes. But I feel like that's only down to uh, his his friendship with Charlotte. Is that this idea of? Well, where am I going with this? Um, yeah, sort of like the scene on the phone where he's in the it's, it's... in the sauna, uh, and he's talking about how oh, I want to, I want to eat Japanese food now, and and this idea that he's having a great time because it's this escapism from from his wife and his and his kids. But I feel like that's totally down to his relationship with he's Charlotte. Pure grass is greener. Else. That's what's going on. Like he's not he's not happy anywhere. Yeah. No, no, but. but... Then again, I, I wouldn't describe him as a, um, a depressed person, like in the same way that you would with with uh, uh, no, it's not the same her. kind. But I definitely feel like he's he's. I don't know why. I don't know if he's depressed, but he's unsatisfied. Yeah, it, it's just dealing with twenty five years of a. It's apparently love. Uh, oh, it's, you can interpret it as such as a loveless marriage. It's it's just a constant going on about the burgundy <laughs> which, carpet. Which one like is that. burgundy? Things that aren't important. I feel like, yeah, it's it's a it's a portrayal of a marriage that has run its course. I think, and it's got to the point where everything is just bland and nothing's new. Well, that is a good juxtaposition for um, how we see Charlotte and John's marriage, which is a new marriage. They're they're very affectionate to each other, even though um, it comes to the annoyance of. Of Charlotte at times because she wants that all the time. A bit off topic, but I, I felt like ten of those carpet samples were burgundy. I could classify. Yeah, I think that's the point, isn't uh, it? That they're all the same, and you're supposed to differentiate the two. And it's worth sending out. No, it was a different. It was a different so, time in two thousand two. Uh, it, it, I feel, I feel like yeah. it does play a lot differently <laughs> to how it would now. I saw that. I saw that they were going to make the the film on high definition. That uh, was Francis yeah, Ford Coppola's yeah. suggestion, who's one of the executive producers on the film. But apparently, um, 
apparently um, Sofia Coppola saw it as well, it's not um, just about more the romantic. main characters' um, romance. It's just sort of like falling in love with that freedom for the for the little time that they have it. I was going to yeah. say that. Uh, yeah, but it has it, but it, but it doesn't really make much sense because I feel like Tokyo is such a. It, it's in, it embraced technology way before other cultures, as you can see with with the it, the way that it shoots like um, arcade scenes and and the versions yeah, of Times Square. Yeah. It's not Times Square, but with with the advertising, yeah, stuff like that. Um, I feel like that would have really embraced the way that it would have played going forward um, if it had been shot in. I, 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 I quite liked the film. I liked the, the 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 tone, the vibe it was going for. I was just gonna say there is something mm. um, sort of. In the way that Bill Murray's character enjoys just roaming around Japan, where a lot of people, where people don't really know him, and this comes, I'm trying to think of another yeah. example, but you know this idea of a celebrity and the spending time in a place where nobody knows who they are, and they're enjoying that freedom. Yeah, well, yeah. The, the example I'd use is the time that Daniel Radcliffe says <laughs> Comic Con yeah, yeah. to Superman, uh, Spider Man. So it's sort of like it's no, exactly no, that anyway, because he's just having a Spider Man ticket and he can he can fit in where that, 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 that's like a romantic nice. ideal in its own right. Just that freedom to roam around and have fun with these these people that he barely knows and making these new friends. I yeah. mean, it gen- it's generally one of the most enjoyable aspects of the film. Like, as you say, though, he's not like the greatest yeah. person on the planet. Yeah, I mean, but in this, in these Murray. scenes, he's allowed to be just someone else. Which, yeah, and and it's a good way of sort of like the way that he transitioned his career as well, because it's a good combination of the former actor he was and the actor he's now, in terms of he still has that, he still has that kind of like upbeat kind of attitude where he's always trying to be sort of the charmer and the entertainer like yeah. he did back in the day, and um, but also fitting in with. So, so there's very similarities between this and his character in Groundhog, Groundhog Day, for example. But also, there's similarities in the way that he portrays it in terms of his recent performances in things like Rob the Casbar and in uh, Saint Vincent, and most recently in Sofia Coppola's film that she released last year, um, On the Rocks. I like his frequent very collaborators. Kind of that you have there. It's a lot easier for him. I mean, the way apparently yeah. they, they got hold of him was yeah, well, Wes, Wes Anderson had to give yeah. Sofia Coppola his fax number. I think it was his fax, not his answering machine. Yeah, and and she had to leave like a hundred messages yeah. before I got back to her, and then it, she wasn't even sure it was going to show yeah. up until a week before filming. Because a long time ago, I think late nineties, yeah. Bill Murray swapped out his his management team for literally just a phone, <laughs> an answering machine, which I think really yeah. no wonder that makes him such a perfect choice for this character. He was just so advanced in his career, and he's just yeah. so done with everything. He's just taking this massive payoff project, and it's just just to get away for a mm. bit. Yeah, exactly. And, and he's still complaining about it. Yeah, um, because it's like, it's like two million dollars. It's a very it's, even it's even if you're a like Bill Murray clone. Work. I mean, they use actual footage from Bill Murray projects in in the film from SNL to to represent yeah. to represent yeah, a yeah. scene of one of um, uh, Bob's films. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this, of course, was his only Academy Award nomination, which he was actually one of the major. I think he was a favourite going into the night, actually, to actually win because he won the Golden Globe and he won the BAFTA Best Actor. But I think an underperformance from the film in general um, really cost him that win, and he and ended up losing to Sean Penn. And we talk about a lot about on the show relating to how awards were yeah. voted in retrospect. And I think, in retrospect, he would win Mystic River. because Sean Penn won five years later for Milk. Well, yeah. Sean Penn won for Mystic River that year, but he also won for Milk in 2008, which is a, a unbelievable performance. If you haven't oh, seen Johnny Milk, Depp was nominated for Pirates of the Caribbean. But, I mean, it was a, at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a strange. It's a stranger time if you're part in the poll. At the time, um, that was a very time, refreshing think, performance. Um, you have to understand. Um, these days, yeah. Well, 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 it's just um, perceived in a very different way. Yeah, so exactly. the way that we look at parts of but not surprised. Yeah, exactly. Again, it's another one. We talk, we talk about this every episode: the idea of voting a few years in advance, 
Um, I do think Lord of the Rings would still win in this case. Uh, it was still in picture, yeah, and director, and probably most of the technical things. I think the frustrating thing for the film here would be um, that it wasn't nominated below the line, which I think is very bizarre. So if you look at its performance at BAFTA, it received, yeah. what, eight nominations? Yeah, eight nominations compared to the four that it received at the Oscars. And it won in actor, actress, and editing. It wasn't even nominated. Yeah, I found that surprising. Actress. This was a really good breakout role for Scully Johnson. Yeah, this is something I wanted to bring up because it's all about context. Um, and I've done a bit of research <laughs> here <laughs> about why. Um Scott Johansson was also in a film called uh, Girl, Girl with a Pearl, uh, Pearl Earring in 2003, which was her breakout role because she was cast in that film based yeah. on how much she looked like the painting. and She does look a lot like the painting, so she was cast in that one. And that, was, that received equal acclaim. And you can only be nominated in Best Actress for one performance. You can't be nominated for both. Oh, so right, it's probably okay. both split there. Um I think that would be why. And she also won it BAFTA because um, Charlize Theron, who won Best Actress that year for Monster, wasn't eligible. She was, she oh, won the yeah, I was going to say. Because of the change the change of BAFTA rules relating to... The, she, uh, I know Scarlett Johansson books. wouldn't have won anyway uh, at the Oscars because of Charlize Theron, no. but I do think she would have deserved the nod if it wasn't for that vote split. Yeah, it, it's a weird... Yeah, so um, I think Keisha Castle Hughes was the was the um, was the performance which was a surprise because Whale Rider was just a small Australian film He's... and she was like thirteen or things like that, and it was a very surprising nomination that she got there uh, instead. But uh, it's, it's such is the such is the case with it's fascinating with awards, to me um, that so yeah. it won for best original screenplay, well deserved. But a lot of the film yep. was shot yep. with improvisation in mind, which is another reason why Bill Murray was yeah. perfect for the role, like literally written for him. Because there's a lot of scenes yeah, like when they're in the sushi place where they're just supposed to riff off of each other. And that's what makes, I think, the connection feel so realistic. Yeah, yeah but screenplay is... Yeah, yeah. Screenplay more, more than dialogue. Than just, um, it's the decision not to do dialogue, dialogue and let yeah. them improvise off each other, which worked so well for the film. Yeah, of course. But it's also setting up the scenes and and saying, I want a scene in this specific place and then and then dialogue will come from that. And I want it structured at this point in the in the film, this point in the narrative, when is it going to be an important scene? So, like, there's a lot of scenes in in diners yeah. or in bars where they're just talking to each other and those are massively important to get those in the right place and have the right tone to fit what's just happened in the film um i think that's a good point to move on to the spoilers section so if you haven't watched the film and you do not want to hear spoilers then i'd suggest thank you. Off now but thank you very much for listening but if you have seen the film and you want to listen to the spoilers um please continue listening so oh, okay. yeah, the big of the big. Yeah. Um, what I was going to mention there was um, the tonal shift of the Donna scenes compared to after we find out about. Oh, it's so Donald bizarre uh, on his wife with with. Uh, uh, I, I don't, I don't like that cut. decision, but I get. I the think point. Uh, But I think the film would have been still good without it. But it's sort of like they didn't even show any of it. It's sort of like they showed them talking, and then the next thing, yeah, you know, it's, in, it's, in it's in like sudden and meaningless. In a hotel and cheap, room. And I think it's supposed. It's like it's yeah. either uh, yeah, exactly. that's the point, isn't it? That's what cheating is sometimes. But but then again, it's sort of like I feel like it's such an important plot point, and you, it's just all a bit. Convenient. Oh, when, when she knocks on the I door, like that's yeah, a that's a bit it's ridiculous. Sort of, I hate that. Yeah, it's all a bit convenient, isn't it? And then they have that awkward. Awkward, um, uh, that's that's what you're supposed to ask as an audience. What what even are these characters to each other? Like, what is going? I mean, it's my yeah. I mean, she sort of was, even though he doesn't uh, know her anything. That's That's the weird thing. (laughs) No, unless it's sort of like disappointing him because he knows. I think it's both. I think it's a lot of mixed emotions, and but part part of it is definitely she feels like. She feels personally betrayed, and then a part of it is she looks down. He was sort of like an idealistic friend for her I, I, to have while she was there, and now 
there's now yeah. something about him which makes him less perfect, a lot less perfect. I, I guess you need to have... I think it's just following that idea that you have in screenwriting about... Um, you have this idea where you have to End have a, a, a conflict yeah. in order to have a resolution. Yeah, I think that was but just do an you excuse think to it's, have a conflict. Uh, Rather than a, like a fighting situation, like they, they fall out with each other through... I do like that aspect of it. And I do like that it's indirect, in but it still feels like a betrayal. I do think there's something clever about that. But it is disappointing. It is disappointing but that it, we, it falls yeah, into that traditional screenplay about. structure. Mm, yeah, because it's such a yeah, it's, unconventional it's, film so, I mean, everywhere else, isn't do it? Do you think it's a character assassination? Like, What do you think is going on there? I, does it bother you that, that, that Bob decided to do that? Um, yeah. <laughs> sort of. So, sort of I, I, I didn't really get the point. But it was just a... Yeah, it just it's just sort of like, it's like I don't get the point of this, but it it is it is what it is, isn't it? Um, I, I feel like it's supposed to be done so they have the conflict, bef- so they can have the resolution, so they can have that sort of like making up uh, before he leaves, sort of thing. So she does actually care about him or whatever. Um, but why do you think I don't know? I think it could have been done that it cheats way, with the lounge singer and not with Charlotte. Yeah, why? Why do you think? Sophia... I think that's massively important. No, but then again, it doesn't because. Well, we can talk about it now because of yeah. the the scene at the end. <laughs> because he does <laughs> cheat on his wife with Charlotte by kissing her in the in the thing. I like this yeah. is this is the thing we talk about improvisation, right? That's the improvisation that I really don't like. I don't get why yeah. he needed to, because that wasn't in the script, right? The the kiss wasn't in the script. So what is realistically saying? Is that Sophia Coppola has made a film which isn't a romantic film? She has not scripted a romantic film. I disagree, film. but go on. I don't think personally, but that but that completely changes everything. Him choosing to to kiss her after the whisper that whisp. I think we know not it. Supposed I, to I, know I read it something like um, that's the whole point. Go, of it. Go to, it, I know, but it's not. It's, not, it's, some, it's something like yeah, go it's to make sure the next thing you do is tell matter. that man the truth. Some, some like anyway. The, the point of it is go tell your husband how you really feel. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't matter because you're supposed to not know. Is the point? But I feel like the, the kiss changes absolutely everything. I, I disagree, but I at the same it time, necessary. it's not the complete opposite. It's not like the the, the big kiss from a normal rom com. Which is what people might think it's supposed to emulate in like yeah. a tr- traditional structure. It's not. It's not the big kiss moment. I think it's it's somewhere in the middle. I think it's just something. That... Yeah, it's sort it's of. Not bit, though, that, it's not even that. It's not even that dramatic. Even though it does literally chase yeah, her. Yeah. I don't think it's supposed to be that. It's more of just like this one final like personal moment between the two, and I completely get that. But I don't think it reframes the film mm. at the same time. I think it does. Because it because it changes the way that you perceive everything that you've just watched. Was I mean, there romantic def- tension involved after all? Oh, because I think the film I can mean, exist for, without. At the end of the day, tension. they are still mainly friends. But there is scenes, and um, we go back to that karaoke yeah. scene again, where the, the the way they're like, what they're singing and what the, and while they're looking at each other, it's definitely supposed to be some tension there. But it's not like. Yeah. Yeah, it's, the it's unsp- the repressed the, feeling, again repressed lost in translation emotions, that unspoken it? sort of like... connection. But are you saying it's supposed yeah. to remain unspoken? Mm. Yeah, I think so because I just feel like it's sort of like because there's such no, a big no. gap between the two, they're not right for each other romantically, are they? Or anything like that. It's, it changes it into being a bit more of a fling rather than actually something. In that like, sense, do you do you feel like the lounge there, singer was like, a, and, and we're relating this back to her again? Do you think the lounge singer was like a, a surrogate <laughs> in the way that um, th- there was a surrogate in her? Do you know? Do you know? I, I, I... no, not really, because I feel like no, it could have been because, but we're not shown enough of it. We don't yeah. really know what. Bill Murray's character's intention was because we don't know. We're, we're sort of told that it's sort of like it was just a drunken mistake, but he would have acted in a specific you know way what been... while drunk anyway. We just don't know how he acted that way. Did Do he, you know what would have been amazing, Joseph? What happened? If he initiated conversation with her 
the same way he did with Charlotte. I mean, he might have reframed his character, but that would have been an yeah. amazing callback. If you know, if he suggested, if he suggested the whiskey he was mm. advertising with the same quote, and then you're well, there's a deliberate reason yeah. why she didn't do this because then you'd be left wondering where what what was his intention with Charlotte when they first met. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, that it, it, it's just a bit dodgy because he's it's, it's like, no accident. Like 50s. 86s or whatever. I'm not surprised what age is. And it's no like accident that the lounge it's, singer it's is sitting dodgy. where Charlotte was when they first met, which is why the idea of is it like no. a surrogate for Charlotte? Because he'd. Yeah, I, th- I think so. It could have been something that's been. You do that because you're feeling a specific way. So you just, you know, you portray those feelings onto someone oh, like else. On, but I don't know. It's. I don't know. It, on, it on becomes the flip a bit side of what I suggested point, earlier, I like. and and puts Bill Murray in a bit of a better light. If if the lounge singer said something similar to what Charlotte said, and that's what prompted him to sort of um, yeah. look at her as a surrogate for that relationship. Yeah. That's so. Anyway, that would completely change. Uh, that that would mm. reframe how he was earlier in the film and his intentions. But that's just my suggestion of one way in which. It would have been better for us to see more of that scene, like you were saying. Yeah, I, I don't know. It it could have been one of those. You can see it as sort of like repressed feelings, mutually sort of like similar to the relationship between Death and Francesca in the second season of Master of None. If I'm using uh, an example of this, but but also in another case where you can see it as a friendship or kinship or escapism or anything like that. You can literally read yeah. this film in any kind of way. Oh, yeah. But I, I feel like the ending at. for me puts it into a specific way that you have to have read the film. So a, a rewatch would make it come across in a very different way to how you're supposed to work out the characters during the film. Which is why it's smartly written in itself, but also it could be... um, has its flaws, I think. It could be but a good reason general, for why we didn't see more good. of that that scene then. Um, not not to flip flop on the idea, but yeah, <laughs> uh, it's it's not, yeah, it's not going to be one of those cases where it's like um, they leave no, each no. other's partners and go run off together in a uh, and it's happily ever after. I think we're left in a position where what so happened. So, what do you in think Tokyo Charlotte's intentions in Tokyo, were? I think it's just to be, um, yeah, you know, given central think... attention by someone, and will be there for whatever she wants and she desires, and actually sort of cares about her to a certain extent. Even though I don't really think that's the case at all, um, because Bill Murray, yeah, very, very selfish. I mean, very self-centered. I think. I, I, I think she sees him as someone completely different to how she wants to see him, because I think it's just a reflection of her. Um, distrust towards um, uh, Giovanni Rabisi's character, which is which is talked about when when she's talking on the phone, sort of like she's saying about how oh I saw some monks today and I don't really feel anything and and um, and then she says oh, so uh, I, I I don't know who the the man I married is anymore and then she isn't really given the answer that she wants. So she just wants sort of an outlet for her emotions. And she sees that through. That's not true. Not Paris, but I don't think that's really yeah. um, truthful. No, she's just, he's just a representative I mean, of someone. They're both just like ide- idealistic versions of what the other wants. Where, where the true, the true like yeah. personality of each character, they don't have to show because, you know, they're only there for a week. It's a strange place. They can just have fun with each other. You can yeah. you can not be yourself for a certain amount of time if it doesn't have any repercussions long term. The fil- the thing is, these things that the characters do should have long term repercussions. But I think we're presented with a reality. I, I that they're not just going like to. in real life, I uh, do feel like Charlotte and sorry, what's Giovanna Rips's character called? John. I think they probably are splitting up if if it's supposed to mirror what happened in real life because I don't think yeah definitely. I mean and and if I don't know if Giovanni if John was cheating um, are we not are we, are we told that did I miss that uh, I I think it'd be uh, interesting told, if he but isn't this. but just the the distrust between the distrust between the two of them 
is just oh, but oh, from Charlotte to John is just enough that she just doesn't. Yeah, yeah. and this, I, yeah, she was like back. crying out for help, literally crying out for help on the phone to whoever she was talking to. Well, yeah, well she, well she needs to find herself, sort of thing. She doesn't have any. Like Bill Murray says life. to her when they're uh, when they're Let's in the when they're having the awkward restaurant scene, he says to her, "Was there no one else there to lavish you, lavish you with attention?" And that's the closest they have, yeah, you know, to, yeah, to a proper argument, which is more grounded and more realistic. Bicker, and it's not yeah. what either of them want while they're there in Tokyo. So the the quickly make up and the, <laughs> which I follow that you know that fire alarm scene, they quickly just mm. make up like one or two scenes yeah. afterwards, which again is, yeah. But, but I was really confused with that. So like, oh, when are you leaving? Tomorrow. Right. It's the middle <laughs> of the night. So whether it's, is it in the morning or afterwards? or uh, the, the, the whole concept of time just goes out the window, really. But I think that's sort of yeah, the point well, where, it's like, when you're in that situation, time doesn't really matter. And also, also I think it's very important when she finds out, when he finds out that she's staying longer, he decides to do the talk show. Oh, interview. Definitely. I feel like that's a very important scene. Because he wasn't, he was trying to get back as soon as possible. But as, far, as soon as he finds out that Charlotte's staying for an extended period, uh, he says, "Oh, <laughs> make me stay." Oh, this. I'm not going to lie. Interview, ten seconds. I did the to little watch, ten but... second skip a couple of times over that. I did. That's <laughs> oh, <it's> painful. <laughs> yeah, the little heart that he does to the to the TV and oh, having God. to translate. Um, and I, that's stuff, that's it's, it's, like my oh, final cringe. argument of it being a romantic film is is that extension definitely lean, leans towards that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get it. Okay. Um, I think that will do yeah, it. Yeah, watch it. If you somehow got to this point and haven't watched it, it's, it's, I mean, yeah. but it's a short film as well. Well, be surprised. You're listening to spoilers. You're listening to spoilers. Skip. skip. Oh, he's, I think no I'll rewatch this. I'll definitely, I'll, this, this. This will go on the yeah. rewatch list, the mental rewatch list that I have. Yeah, it's, it's definitely one of the most watchable. It is something of, fun. How does it compare to the decades. films we've done so definitely. far? Yeah. Uh, they've all been good. I've, I've liked them all. Uh, you know, it's probably not making the most entertaining of, of programmes to say, no, I like these films, but what can I say? These are really good. And I, I don't want to really... We'll get into some worse films, I think, over time, but it's like, um, yeah. All for uh, best... Are uh, the ones we've done so far, what's your, uh, what's your pick enough. for uh, best picture if these were all in the same category? Social network. <laughs> Oh, it's a strong one to start on because there's nothing for <laughs> yeah, yeah. a while it's that I think is going to top so. that, to be honest with you. It, there's a, uh, I'm going to ask, I'll ask that every, every, every couple of episodes and see if your opinions changed, depending on what we've, uh, what we've reviewed. Yeah. I mean, it's weird. I, 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 I think um, I didn't like Social Network as much on the second watch as I did on the first watch. I think obje- I think it still stands objectively yeah. as probably the best film, uh, at least for me. Is that our only winner so far? Oh, he didn't win, did it? King's Speech won. Our only King's Speech won in no 2010, country. right? No Country for yeah. All Men. Oh. Oh, it's so yeah. strange. It's so strange. Unfortunately so. Which isn't a bad film. We, we might we might review that in a... In but a it's so bizarre looking back retroactively. Um, held out, but... Yeah, no. Yeah. It, it'll be there's ones that will age worse. Like like I think well, 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 well it's a worse aging, aging one a day after the Oscars. Um, as a winner. <laughs> the, 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 at the time, like as soon as yeah, it was oh, announced. Whoops. It was one for me where as soon as it was like, no, nope, laptop down. <laughs> because it's genuinely the film is like twenty years out of date. Anyway, that's a show that's a that's an episode no problem. For another show. Um thank you, James, for coming on. And hopefully we'll get another episode out soon. Make sure to follow us on Spotify, subscribe on YouTube, and also follow on Twitter. Twitter is the best place if you want to get involved with the show as well, ask any questions or anything like that. And I always put out what film we're reviewing before we do it uh, on there. So if you follow us on uh, on Twitter at bestpicture underscore pod, uh, then you'll be updated whenever any, any show goes up or when we're about to record the show. So, so that will do it for today. Thanks very much for for listening and we'll see you again next time.